I hadn't been working with Home Assistant very long when I stumbled across something in the forums about a dashboard and I saw some images of what people have done turning a tablet into a really cool touch display. They called it Home Assistant Dashboard. I knew right away I had to have it. When I first looked into it, it was quite intimidating, but a little persistence, some figuring out, and thankfully a lot of work on the developer's side to make it a lot easier, and now I got a pretty good handle on it. And pretty soon, you will too. Best to start by listing a few prerequisites here. Of course, you need to have Home Assistant already installed and running. The method I'm going to show you is based on using HASS.io. If you're using Haspian or some other installation, that process is going to be a little different. But I will show you where the instructions are. Hopefully, that'll be enough. In order to really get the most out of this, you're going to need some kind of a tablet. And the Home Assistant dashboard doesn't really need a tremendous amount of firepower in the tablet. All you really need is a pretty display in the size you want that's got a web browser. First thing we need to do is include the add-on app daemon. In order to get it, we need to put this URL into the add-on repositories box. Click save and a whole new list of add-ons will pop up. The one we want is app daemon 3. So click that, hit install. After a minute or so, you'll get the app daemon add-on page. All you have to do here is click start. Once you hit install, a whole bunch of folders and files get created for you. The first file we need to get into is called appdaemon.yaml. So we can use the configurator and ator to open it up and make some changes. The two things you need to do in this file are to add the URL or IP address for your instance of Home Assistant. There's one line that says HA URL, that's the Home Assistant URL. If you're using DuckDNS or something else, you can put that URL here too. Then where it says dash URL, you put the same IP address but with port 5050. You can just put the internal IP address of your Home Assistant Pi. You don't need something like DuckDNS if you're not going to need access to it from outside of your house. Now, if you're using a secrets file for your passwords, you don't need to do anything else. But if, like me, you're stuck in the old days and you're still putting passwords in your YAML files, then comment out the line at the top that references the secrets file and put your Home Assistant password in a line titled HA key. That's all you need to do in this file. So save it and then go back to HASS.io and restart AppDaemon. It takes 20 or 30 seconds for AppDaemon to restart. If you want to be sure it's restarted, scroll down to where it says Logs and click the Refresh button. When it finally says App Initialization Complete, then you know AppDaemon is back up and running. Now there's already an example dashboard included with this add-on. So to see it, all we have to do is click Open Web UI, or you can type the IP address of your Home Assistant Pi and port 5050 into your browser. That'll bring up a menu page that'll give you a list of all of your dashboards. Right now, the only one you have is called Hello. But that example dashboard isn't much to look at. So now let's start setting up a real dashboard. All of our dashboards need to go in a folder called Dashboard. To find it, go to Config, App Daemon, and there it is, Dashboards. We're going to start our new dashboard from scratch. So open a new file and call it whatever you want, dot dash. Your best friend when it comes to creating a dashboard is going to be this Dashboards creation page. So bookmark it, because you're going to want to refer back to it a lot. So when we start a dashboard, the first thing we need to do is set up this main argument. They've already got a nice example here, so we're just going to copy everything it says and paste it into our new file. The dashboard is divided up into blocks by columns and rows, where it says widget dimension. It's laying out the size of each of those blocks in pixels. We're not going to adjust that right now, but if you wanted to get fancy, this is where you could adjust the size of your widget blocks. Where it says widget size 1 1, that just means each widget, if you don't say any different, is going to be one column wide and one row tall. And margin just defines the space in between the widgets. Where it says use has icon 1, that's telling the dashboard to use whatever icon you already have set for each entity in Home Assistant. Now to set up the actual layout of the dashboard, we're going to start a new section called Layout. The layout is arranged in rows and columns. You start each row with four spaces. Don't do tab. And each widget is separated by a comma. Now you can start copying entities from Home Assistant. The best way to find a list of all your entities is to go to the main page of Home Assistant under Developer Tools to the States screen. That's the little pointy bracket symbol. That'll give you a list of all the entities that you have connected to Home Assistant. To turn those entities into widgets, just copy and paste. There are two widgets already built into App Daemon, Clock and Weather. I'm going to start with the Clock widget, and I want my clock to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to define a new size by adding a parentheses, then the number of columns, X, then the number of rows. So my clock widget will be two columns wide and one row tall. For the rest of the first row on my example dashboard, I'm going to put a bunch of temperature sensors. 
So I just grab sensor.temperature, copy it and paste it. And then we've got a bunch of blink cameras that also have temperature sensors. So I'm gonna copy and paste a bunch of those. Now on my second line, I'm gonna do presence detection. That's how we track who's home and who's not home in our family. Those entities are listed under device tracker in Home Assistant. So once again, just gonna copy and paste. We're gonna start with mommy, since she's the most important person to know if she's home or not. We wouldn't survive long without her. On my third line, I'm gonna do some lights. As you can probably guess, most of my lights are Sonoffs. So they're listed as switches in Home Assistant. Control C, Control V. On the last row, I'm gonna put my garage doors. I'm gonna also make the garage doors two columns by one row. It should go without saying that all of these buttons also control these entities. It would be pretty lame if controlling the entities wasn't actually a part of the dashboard, but thankfully it is. I also wanna include my outdoor holiday lights. So I'm gonna put an input select and an input number so I can select which effect I wanna see on the lights and the input number controls the animation speed. Now to make the dashboard look good, you wanna make sure that you filled all of your columns. I went through and counted all the entities I put in and found out that I had a couple of empty spaces in the second row. So I'm gonna put a media player there. I think that's good enough for now. So save it, go back to App Daemon and restart. You don't have to restart all of Home Assistant, just App Daemon. That's nice. Once it's restarted, click Open Web UI again. And now you'll see that under Hello is a new dashboard with the name of the file you just created. Click that and poof, there you go your first beautiful dashboard. Now you can see that there are a few problems with this first dashboard. Number one, the media player looks like it defaults to two columns and two rows. So it's spilling over into the row below it. The other thing you'll notice is that some of the titles aren't fitting on the widgets. When the dashboard goes to Home Assistant and grabs the information about the entities, it pulls in the friendly name. But if you haven't assigned it a friendly name, then it pulls in the big long entity ID name and you get this kind of jumbled garbage. You can fix that by either including a friendly name in Home Assistant, like this, or by adding a title in the dashboard. I'm about to show you how to do that and a couple other cool things. Before we go correct those things, you want to beautify your dashboard in a hurry, you do it with skins. To start using skins, all you have to do is add question mark skin equals, and then there are five skins that you can choose from. One is the default, you don't have to put anything in to get that, and that's what you're looking at right now. But the other four skins are Zen. I don't know how they made that on button animated, but that's awesome. The next one is simply red. Now as a Michigan fan, red is not my favorite color. So we'll skip that one pretty quickly, but I do like the way they kind of rounded the buttons. The third one and the one that's my favorite and that I'm going to be using until I create my own skin is obsidian. Looks nice. And the last one is classic. Well, that dashboard looks pretty good, but what's the enemy of good? Not good enough. So let's mess with it some more. We're going to do some custom widget definitions. Since this is our first dashboard, we're not gonna do anything too crazy. These are things I'm gonna show you how to do. Font size, font color, background color, title, and icons. Let's start by modifying the clock widget. Now the clock widget is included in App Daemon, so it's not getting any information from Home Assistant. To define the font size, you put this line. I want it big, so I'm gonna make it 200%. The clock widget includes a date and a time. If you wanna change the color of the font for the time, you put this. If you wanna change the color of the font for the date, you put this. From trial and error, I figured out that anytime you define a style, it has to be in quotes and it has to end with a semicolon before the closing quote. For some reason, other definition types don't need that. But if it's a style, it does. That should get our clock looking pretty good. Now let's use my office lights widget to show how to modify a normal widget. First thing you're gonna do, go to the entity in the layout and delete everything before the period and the period. Now copy what's left of the entity ID, go above the layout somewhere and paste it. Now, anytime you change the widget definition, there are a couple important things that you have to include or your widget won't work. The first is the widget type. When you take away that text in front of the period, you take away the dashboard's ability to know what kind of widget it is. Fortunately, all you have to do is put widget type and then really put whatever it was that you deleted in front of the period. Switch, input select, sensor, whatever it is. The second equally critical part in defining your own widget is to include the entity. If you don't do this, your widget won't have any reference to the entity in Home Assistant. That means it won't be able to detect the state and you won't be able to control it. Then all it would be is just a button that doesn't do anything. 
We don't want any buttons that don't do anything. Every button around here has got to pull their own weight. Another thing that you need to include when you're providing your own widget definition is the title because it won't pull the title from Home Assistant anymore. In this case, I'm going to change the name of my office to the throne room because that's where the king lives. Now I want to make sure that everybody knows that dad's office is the throne room. So I'm going to make the title a different color. I do that by defining title style. And just like the other times we used style, we need to start with quotes. And I also want the words to be bigger so everybody can see it. So I'm going to make the font size 150%. I end with a semicolon and close the quotes. That should do it. You can also change the background of the widget by defining widget style and background. Again, this is a style, so don't forget your quotes and your semicolon. Now the last bit of fun we're going to have is by changing the icons. According to the documentation, you can use font awesome icons or the material design icons. I couldn't get the font awesome icons to work for some reason, but the material design icons worked and there's plenty there to choose from, so I'm going to use those. All right, that should do it. Let's save it, restart App Daemon, and see how our new dashboard looks. Oh yeah, that'll do. Now let's see how it looks on a tablet. Well, that's it for this video, but we are not done. With Home Assistant Dashboard. In another video, we'll go through how to create multiple dashboards and how to create your own skin. So that's it. I think it looks fantastic and it's got a 100% WAF. Can't ask for much more than that. We should all be really grateful to these guys for doing all the work to put together Home Assistant Dashboard. Head to their GitHub, give them a like, put some comments on their page, let them know how much you appreciate all the work they've done. They're awesome guys. Once again, I'm ending the video with some cool news. In a couple months, we're gonna have a booth at the Maker Fair in Salt Lake City. If you've never been to a Maker Fair, they're awesome. They're for people like us. If you're watching this video, either you're my mom, hi mom, or you're a maker. If you've never been to a Maker Fair, you should go. If you can't come to the one in Salt Lake, there's probably one close to you. To get ready for the Maker Fair, we're gonna be building a display. So some of what I'm gonna be spending my time on over the next few weeks is gonna be putting together that display. Hopefully I can combine some of that with making videos that'll be useful to you. And I'm also gonna mix in some live sessions. So if you haven't yet, click the little bell that'll give you a notification and hopefully it'll tell you when we're doing a live session. My expectation for the live sessions will be questions and answers. So if you've got a problem, and I can tell by the comments that that happens a lot, and the best way to solve them is probably some sort of a live video teleconference. So that's what I'm planning on doing. And I'll make sure to send out a message on Twitter and Instagram so you know when we're about to start. Well, that's all for now. Hope that was helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.